honey, did you know that when you flip the switch on a leaf blower, it turns into a vacuum? No. Did you know that a squirrel's scream is louder than a leaf blower? Uh, listen, honey, I've got some bad news. What is it? Ruth died. Oh, no, no. Who's Ruth? Your great aunt Ruth, Ruth Hamilton. Don't you remember her? Oh, Ruth. Yeah, well, I mean, I only met her once when I was five. All I remember is she used to put tobacco and paper in her mouth and a cigarette would pop out. Well, apparently we're going to be planning her funeral. There's a check here for $3,000. What? We have to plan her funeral? Why wasn't this sent to my dad? He was the one that was raised by her. It was sent to him. It looks like he forwarded it to us. you got to be kidding me. Well, he spent his whole life avoiding responsibility. Why should now be any different? Well, he's not avoiding this. I'm just going to take it back to him. I didn't even know her. This is his responsibility. What are you guys talking about? Your dad's great aunt, Ruth. We have another aunt besides Charlie? Why don't she give us birthday presents? Uh, boys, she, um, she died. It still doesn't answer my question. <laughs> Since here, she lived until she was 92 years old, a long and wonderful life. You boys ought to show a little more respect. How'd she die? She fell off a balcony making a Girls Gone Wild video. Um, listen, honey, you know, your, your great Aunt Ruth, she was really old lady. And uh, when people get old, their bodies give out on them and they die. So she's in heaven now? Yes, sweetie, of course she is. Unless they find out she still owes me 12 birthday presents. <laughs> Since the boys are going out back, why don't me and you head back to the... Ronnie, your aunt just died. I know. Hold me. <laughs> Welcome to Quickies. Can I take your order? Yeah, let me get a chili dog. That'll be $1.95. Please pull forward. Here you go. Hey, Dale. Rodney. How are you doing? I'm good. It's just that I got this in the mail and I think it belongs to you. You need to take care of that. Oh, I ain't taking this. <laughs> she was your great aunt, Rodney, and she loved you. Show some respect. Don't tell me about respect. You're the one that lived with her. I didn't even know the woman. This is your responsibility. You know, you're really sucking the joy out of my dream job here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to move. You're holding up the line. No, I'm not done with you yet. I'm working here. Pull forward. Fine! Welcome to Quickie. Can I take your order? Look, the only thing I want is for you to take care of Aunt Ruth. A chocolate shake. Please pull forward. That'll be a dollar seven. You know, I can overlook the fact that you live 20 minutes away from your grandkids and you never visit. But the least you can do is be a decent enough human being and take care of your aunt's funeral. I ain't doing that. Ruth was a miserable woman. She made everyone around her miserable. Good seeing you. Give my best to Tina. It's Trina, not Tina. You're holding up the line. Well, give me some fries. No. Give me some fries. No. Damn it, Dale! Where's Dale? Uh, he's on break. Do me a favor. Make sure he gets this, please. Sure, mister. Ah. Here are your fries. Have a nice night. Thanks. I will. Damn it, Dale! <laughs> so now I'm stuck planning this funeral. So let's just get us a box, a piece of ground, and be done with it. Okay. Well, what's our budget here? $3,000. Hey, you think we can bury her in a big screen TV box? <laughs> hey. Oh, look at this one here. Oh, yeah, that's solid walnut. Looks like a tight grain, hand rubbed. Oh, buddy, I believe this is the one you need to go with. Rodney. 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 Marco. Polo. Marco. Polo. Marco. Marco. Polo. <laughs> oh.
All right, I've got you. Come out of there. Hey, Bert. Hurry, I'm stuck. <laughs> well, try pushing. I am pushing, but quit sitting on the lid. Why would I be on the lid? Because that's what I'd be doing if you were in here. Look, stop talking. Take short breaths. You're... There can't be a lot of oxygen in there. Damn it, Barry, get me out of here! You probably used up half your oxygen right there. <laughs> Rodney, I don't know what to do. Rodney? Rodney! You told me to quit talking! <laughs> I don't want to end up like this, Barry! <laughs> oh, sir, could you help me? Uh, my, my buddy fell in and it got stuck. <laughs> How come there's not a latch in there? Where's the light? It's scary in there. You're funny, we've never had any complaints before. Might I be of some assistance? Yeah. We're planning a funeral. My aunt died. I'm terribly sorry for your loss. At times like these, it's important. Yeah, yeah, yeah. To... you could stop all that crap. I didn't know her. <laughs> what kind of deals you got? Well, the Platinum Chariot package includes a mahogany casket, burial arrangements, pallbearers, clergy, and embalming. Okay, great. We'll write that up. Now, how would you like to pay? Third-party out-of-state check. Uh -huh. <laughs> That'll be $13,312. Whoa, whoa, hang on. Here. Dang, when did dying become so pricey? 1982. <laughs> Look, what is your least expensive package? That would be the John Doe package. Well, what does that include? A box and a hole. <laughs> How much is that? Five thousand dollars. Man! Wow. Do you have, like, another client that nobody cares about that we can just kind of team her up with? <laughs> I don't think so. Hey, you know what? We could take out an ad. Single, deceased female seeks same for a cozy basement <laughs> apartment. <laughs> Non-breather a must. <laughs> 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 I can see that you're extremely upset. I'll give you a moment. Man, can you believe how much this stuff is? I can't come out of my pocket for this stuff. We gotta cut corners somewhere. Hey, do you still got that nine acres south of town? Yeah. Why don't we just dig a hole and bury her out there? <laughs> Buddy, that's not burying a loved one. That is disposing of a body. I gotta think of something. about this? We're buying a black market casket in an alley behind a Chinese restaurant. What the hell is there to be sure about? <laughs> Excuse me, are you Lou? You police? No. no. Health department? No. Private dick? No. no. Then I'm Lou. What do you want? Uh, where are the guys that called about the casket? Oh, over here. That's it? No, it's the box the casket came in. What the hell you think? Look, I don't mean to tell you how to run your illegal back alley black market casket business, but a little courtesy goes a long way. <laughs> Looks kind of little. Yeah, what's with the size? I asked for a medium. This Chinese medium. We very small people. <laughs> they build amusement park in China. No one tall enough to write anything. <laughs> I don't know how tall Ruth was. I don't know if she'll fit in that. Well, buddy. We're running out of options. You can't just cram an old lady in a tiny little box. Where's the dignity? I gotta draw the line somewhere. I let go for two hundred dollar. Sold. <laughs> no, 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 no. That is way more than we wanted to spend. I just need your basic plot. A, a view. What is she gonna look at? <laughs> oh, behind the mower shed. That sounds perfect. <laughs> yeah, we'll take it. Thank you. Oh, um. Could we dig our own hole? Hello? Hello? I got the flowers! What are you doing? Shefflins are on vacation. We'll just put them back after the funeral. Guess what I got? What? A plot for 1200 bucks. Oh! <laughs> okay, so now we got the plot, the casket, the embalming. Free flowers. We're having the service here. Now all we need is a headstone. I actually think we're gonna come out all right, you know? We just might get Aunt Ruthie underground, under budget. That's what I thought. <laughs> what are you gonna say to Aunt Ruth's funeral? <sighs> I'm not gonna say anything, buddy. I really didn't know her. 
I'm sure that uh, some of her friends will have something nice to say. Yeah. But she's part of our family. Shouldn't you say something, too? Well... Because when Steve the hamster died, everyone said something nice about him. Yeah, but we knew a lot about Steve, you know? I mean, <laughs> we don't have any idea if Aunt Ruth looked cute burying herself in wood chips. I guess we uh, planned a funeral and we left out the part about honoring the dead, huh? Come here, buddy. Listen, I will say something nice about Aunt Ruth at her funeral, okay? Thanks, Dad. You're welcome. Run inside. So what are you going to say at the eulogy? I'll just wing it. Ashes to ashes, dust to dust, here she is, there she goes. Rodney, there's going to be people there that knew her. You just told Bo you're going to do the eulogy. You better find something real to say about her. Huh? If I'm gonna go research her life, give me 40 bucks of her money. At least she can do is pitch in for gas. <laughs> What's that, Aunt Ruth? Okay. She wants to give me 20 bucks for beer on the way home. <laughs> so anyway, I'd like to say something nice about my Aunt Ruth at her funeral, but I really don't know anything about her. Well, Ruth was a congregant here for many years. That's good. Ruth Hamilton was a good Christian woman. Well, she was a woman. <laughs> and she did come to church because after researching it, we found that legally we couldn't keep her out. Are you saying that nobody liked her? Rodney, we're all God's children now that Ruth is dead. <laughs> brought us pie, and she was a good tipper. Great. Ruth Hamilton was a great tipper. Hold up. Ruth Hamilton? Yeah. Oh, hell no. We hated Ruth Hamilton. <laughs> she used to take the pie to good Ruthie brought us. Liked pie. <laughs> Beverly, you hear that? Rotten Ruthie bit it. Who shot her? <laughs> No, no one shot her. She, she died of natural causes. What? Natural causes. What? I shot her. <laughs> and that poor child, she used to drag in here by his ear. I felt so sorry for him. Dale? Yeah, that sounds right. He never had a book to read or a toy to play with. He'd just sit on the floor and play with the hair trimmings. <laughs> and tell him about that poor boy who used to play with the hair trimmings. <laughs> She already told me. What? She told me. What? I shot her. Well, since you're kin to old Ruth, I suppose I should say something nice. Boy, that sure would help. I oh, can't think of nothing. <laughs> One time, my cat, Pearly, climbed up in her oak tree. She shot him down with a BB gun. Liked pie. Look, I think I know enough about Ruth. What can you tell me about the boy that she raised, Dale? Oh, that poor child. He was a good boy. Couldn't do anything right in her eyes. Hmm. Well, she did take him in and raise him. I mean, that's something, right? Yeah, so she could get that government check and go out and buy liquor. Do you know that she kept him out of the fourth grade so he could build her a fence? Hmm. I didn't know that. When's the service? It's Sunday. Would you like me to leave you some information? No, oh, no, no. We just want to make sure she's in the dirt before we start our block party. <laughs> hey, honey, what are you doing? I'm just going to put some food out because these people are going to be hungry when this is all over. Honey, we're on a budget. We can't afford this. It's just beanie weenies. <laughs> beanie weenies? Why don't you just put out a big bowl of money? <laughs> Hey, Dad, look, I made a picture of Aunt Ruth. Oh, that's great, buddy. That looks just like her. Did you think of nice things to say? I sure did. But just remember, she's no Steve the Hamster. All right, come on, let's do this. Come on, come on sweetie. How did you fit a five-foot, ten-inch woman into that tiny casket? There's a little bit of folding involved. 
eternity's gonna be a long time smelling your own feet. She's kind of loaded in there like a spring snake in a can of joke peanuts. Hi, let's get the show on the road. I'm on the lunch break. Charlie, you couldn't have changed out of your work clothes? That's a little disrespectful. Hey, I never met the old lady, okay? I'm doing you a favor by filling a seat. Well, could you at least take off your ask me about our new Texas taters button? That's what that says. I slapped that guy in the face for nothing. <laughs> All right, everybody, if you'll take your seats, we'll get started. First off, I'm Rodney Hamilton. We're here today to pay our respects to my great Aunt Ruth Hamilton. <laughs> whose last wish was to have an open casket. Okay, we're good. <laughs> Sorry about that, folks. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, we are gathered here today to honor the memory of our beloved Ruth Hamilton. Ruth wouldn't have wanted us to be saddened by her passing. In fact, from the people that I've talked to, there's no way she could have expected it. <laughs> <laughs> Too much? <laughs> and for a woman of 92, she was filled with a can-do spirit. Once, when a neighbor's cat was stuck up in a tree, Ruth got her down. True story. She was a God-fearing woman, and I wouldn't be surprised if the feeling was mutual. You know, there's some other things that I learned about Ruth along the way. She was taller than your average Chinese person. And she loved pie. Loved it. Told you all the cat story, right? <laughs> so in summary, uh, she lived a pretty full life. Church by cats. <laughs> so, unless anybody has anything else they'd like to say, we're I gonna... got something. What are you doing here? Paying my respects. Look, uh, my kids are here. Could you try to be nice? They're my grandkids, too. I'm not going to say anything to embarrass you in front of Jack and... Bo. Right. <laughs> I'm Dale Hamilton. Ruth was my aunt, and I grew up in her house. We had our run-ins, Ruth and me. She never wanted me. She made that clear. I remember when I was a teenager, I caught her smashing up my Merle Haggard records. She said it was the devil's music. I told her it was the bourbon and soda talking. And then I called her a dried up old piece <coughs> of <gold>. Dale. <coughs> right, sorry, yeah. Uh, where was I? Dried up old piece of something, Dale. Right, right. <laughs> anyway, uh, Ruth threw me out. So I was sitting on the curb alone thinking I was too good looking to be sitting on the curb alone. When a pretty girl in a beat up El Camino drove up and told me I was too good looking to be sitting on the curb alone. Weird, huh? Anyway, long story short. <coughs> too late. <laughs> and that gal's name was Patsy. When we got married and a little while later we had Rodney here. So what I'm saying is that uh, if it hadn't been for Ruth here, I, I never would have met Rodney's mom and he wouldn't be here. And neither would Jack or Bo. Now that's all I wanted to say. Thanks. <clears throat> well, folks, uh, that's our service. We'd like to invite you inside for some beanie weenies. And please, one weenie per plate of beanies. <laughs> Thanks for coming, Dale. I know it wasn't easy for you. Well, it sure wasn't. No one wanted to take my shift. They were all getting ready to go to the prom. <laughs> I kind of understand why you didn't want to take care of this yourself. I guess I never realized how tough a childhood you had. Yeah, well... 
You didn't have it so good yourself. But this one, this one here, he's got the world by the tail, don't you, Bo? Jack. I know. No, you didn't. I know. I'm glad you came, Grandpa. Me too. All right, Jack, let's go mingle, okay? Good seeing you, Dale. You too, Trina. It's Tina. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I know. No, I'm just messing with you. It's Trina. <laughs> <laughs> and you wonder why I don't come around here, much. <clears throat> hey, Dad, that was a nice speech you gave. Thanks, buddy. How'd you come up with all that stuff? I had a hard time thinking of good things to say about Steve. I thought you loved that hamster. Yeah, but he was always biting me. And then he started pooping on my toothbrush. <laughs> well, the important thing is, is that we did right by Steve, and we did right by Aunt Ruth. I'll get my screw gun. Heavenly.